All right, so anyway, just had to stop a bit there for something. But again, it ended up working out because, again, the previous part to this, right, you know, we were establishing more so what we already know as well as guidelines and, you know, kind of, I don't want to say rules, but guidelines and then kind of ideas for how we would go about moving forward in terms of constructing a moniker out, right, with this stuff we already know being from the two exclusives and the, um, you know, Sunday scene and then the guidelines being how would you balance developing a relationship as well as, you know, again, dealing with her own issues or dealing with her more deeper issues, particularly related to, again, you know, her workload, right? You know, fairly cut and dry, straightforward there. Um, that's, you know, how would you handle Sayori, right? And then her particularly on, again, Monica's draw, especially as the MC has somewhat of a clue of what's going on, or at least is worried about Sayori, even from just what we've seen from the Sunday scene, right? And then also the MC's father there and potentially how you introduce him into the picture, make him a part of it, as I honestly do believe that's why, you know, the MC did bring him up in the second exclusive as it would kind of make more sense there. So we're seeing Orjog's more focused on his mother. This one would be more focused on his father, right? And then potentially, you know, and we know he does still visit his father. At least that's confirmed, right? You know, in that route, given he knew, again, you know, the piano and specifically mentioned when he would visit for that. So it's just interesting there. But again, those are going to be kind of the main three tenets and main th three things that you need to balance and juggle when coming up with a Maka route, right? And again, I had already said we'd already went through Act 1, and I had already mentioned that, again, there'd still be the Halloween event, there'd probably still be a similar Christmas event, and then probably a similar picnic event to culminate the route. So I'm not going to necessarily focus on timeline, rather than I'm going to focus on, for each tenant, how I go about kind of doing it, and then, you know, working it in, and just, again, kind of what I think would be interesting there, right? I'm not going to work on piecing all together that would be potentially a third video, right? If I were to look at specific, you know, timeline, you know, where everything would fit into a timeline, you know, uh, this is just more so what I think actually happening would work out well and would be good and interesting there, right? So there's that, <coughs> you know, let's begin. So the first thing's first, right? And the obvious first one is, again, Monica, right? The big thing there, not just can develop a relationship with her, but also dealing with their more deep-seated issues, which you know is due to our workload, you know, and then that it can almost be split in the two, but I'm going to talk about them as if they're together because it's something to where like one for sure definitely impacts the other, right? Versus like Sayori where it's a different boat and then again, his father is a different boat, right? I'll talk about those two separately. These two I'll talk about together, right? So there's that, right? So Monica, you know, relationship with the MC and then you know, dealing with her more deep-seated issues. I think what would be very interesting is if we got to know Monica's family, right? And specifically, at some point in her route, got to meet with her mother and father, since we know they're still present in her life and that, you know, they're part of the reason why, you know, she does what she does, the expectations they have laid upon her and how strict they are with that. I mean, they didn't even allow her to have games on her laptop, right? So it's like, I, I think her route being heavily centered around him being able to, I, I'm, I'm not going to say necessarily get through to Monica's parents, but at least being able to meet them and then them being a part of the route, which again, it'll be interesting. I haven't played Natsuki's route yet, but seeing how her dad kind of comes into the picture there, it'd be interesting again, at least be able to meet, you know, Monica's parents, right? Because then it's something to where the MCU would kind of be able to better gauge the situation and actually be able to, you know, deal with that, right? But granted, in order to meet her parents, you know, he needs to like, again, that's, that's where, you know, the relationship part would come in, where it's like, okay, you know, he, we already know he's actually pretty in sync and on the same wavelength as Maka, like, they're pretty much, you know, I'm not gonna say fun, but they were definitely, you know, teasing each other, it's like, you, you can see kind of the bounce back there, right, it's like, there, you can, just a few, you know, nudges further, and they're basically flirting, right, so it's like, it's really not that far-fetched to kind of see it head in that direction, especially, after the Sunday scene, and again, not necessarily the MC literally saved Monica, so him being like, oh, now you need to date me, right? It's it's more so, again, because he actually acted, you know, as a friend and treated her as a person rather, you know, than this person who can, like, mooch off of or, like, freeload off of, right? 
you know, like I guess he once initially did, him actually helping her out there and her being thankful for that. Um, again, I feel like it's not super far-fetched to say, obviously, the festival is a little disaster, but, you know, post-festival, right, I guess, you know, that would be the time for him and Monka, you know, to really, like, kind of get together and get closer, right? Um, a big thing there being would, again, you know, obviously, he's going to also help with her, like, workaholic nature, like, you know, make sure she actually spends time in the club on its members, right? And then, you know, spend some time, you know, doing things are than work on their free time, right? Like, I, I can see that being a thing to where he, like, like, and especially since he's kind of lacking when it comes to academics, I can see it being something to where they actually, you know, spend time together just working on, like, homework, right? So that way, you know, she can help him, but then also that way, once they're done, he can kind of put a stop to her workaholic nature, right? And that would be a perfect lead into kind of some conflict and tension between Monica and her parents there, right? Because if, you know, she's spending, because obviously, you know, she spends quite a bit of time at school, right? In the club, you know, she does school, she's on top of her academics, you know, she does her club tennis, both tennis and the Lurch club, and then she goes to cram school. But again, it's something to where it's like, you know, so she spends time there, but then again, you know, if her parents are that strict and we're assuming they have decent control over her schedule, if all of a sudden, you know, like, let's say she's taking a weekend to go and, like, visit the MC and then they spend, like, a day together, you know, they work on their work, right, and then he actually ensures that she gets out and enjoys, you know, life, right, or does stuff there, like, that'd be something they would take up and notice and then kind of, again, question her there, right, and then that would lead to a perfect, you know, tension kind of, you know, what would you call it, um, some sort of tension, some sort of, what would you call it, like, uh, what, what's the term, some conflict there, right, and then that would be a perfect opportunity to, again, then kind of rope the MC in and then have him, like, again, be her parents there, right, you know, because, again, it, it, it cause, and, and then the premise being that because Monica is, you know, an upstanding student, right, her parents just can't, like, fucking, you know, like, it's not like Natsuki's dad where he can kind of just do whatever he wants with Natsuki. I hate to say it. Monica still has appearances and images and her parents, they aren't abusive rather than just being overtly strict. So like they wouldn't completely cut her off there more so than kind of get to the bottom of what's going on. And again, that would inevitably cause them in the MC to meet. And again, a big thing there being, even if they dislike the MC, right, you know, at least he's able to again, meet them and gauge out that situation. And that would be a perfect you know, opportunity to then, okay, you know, bring them even closer together. Monica kind of confides in the MC, you know, apologize for, like, bringing, roping him into it, and then, like, again, the whole sob story about, you know, maybe she, like, finally breaks and cracks, and then, you know, under, like, the pressure of everything, and that, like, the MC confides her there. Maybe that's when you can make the argument she realizes kind of, she and the MC, right, more mutual, they realize their true feelings for each other, Again, you know, at, at some point, this could be after Halloween. Then there's the whole Christmas thing, right? To where maybe, like, I don't want to say it's them kissing, but, you know, maybe, like, she tells him how she feels there. I feel like a big thing would be Monica would need to tell the MC how she feels rather than the inverse, especially with kind of this situation she's put in. Because, okay, obviously the MC's crushing, right? But it's like everyone crushes on Monica. Let's, like, that's the whole point, right? But again, she would be the need to be the one to tell him how she feels about him there. Because, again, she's also her and her parents, right? She's taken a risk by doing that, right? You know, she needs to, like, break away from that comfort zone. And then the MC can reciprocate there. So I think that'd work out really well. Um, And then because what you can do is you can have then that Christmas event where I guess they make it official, you know, do whatever, right? And then what can, in sort of the conclusion of their, like, sort of him dealing with her more deep-seated issues and then their relationship being, like, they go back to, like, her parents, right? And she's like, this is, like my boyfriend, like, this is who I'm with now, like, because, again, it, it's, it's different just being some random dude who she'd been spending time with versus, like, an established relationship, and then, you know, again, whether they, like, I guess, whether they, like, get angry or, like, whether they maintain customs, right, something where, like, he's, he's now cemented and involved, right, and then that's where maybe you can have a scene of him talking with her parents and kind of getting through to them there, like, him, like, revealing to him that she, like, basically broke down, right, you know, and that ended up being something where, you know, that she broke down and that, like, nearly died, like, he can bring up the fact that she nearly died, you know, as well, like, literally almost got run over due to, like, the stress, and then, 
again, the cliche ending would be like, you know, okay, like, they kind of realize what they did wrong, and they, like, they're, like, very sorry, and, like, you know, kind of, well, I guess, regretful of what they've done, um, again, so you can go with that kind of portrayal there, that'd be more of, like, a good ending, and leads to, you know, them, Maka developing a better, healthier work-life balance, right, and then, you know, the MC, her being established relationship with the MC, a more neutral ending would be as if they don't realize, and instead, you know, they, like, antagonize the MC and Monica, but what happens is they just wait until they graduate high school and then just go off to college together, you know, and then Monica just, it, it could be something where she just, like, basically says, like, fuck you, I'm not taking over the family business, and then, like, just goes off to top university, because she could easily, you know, get there, right, versus, like, just taking over the business. Uh, I could see that being a more neutral ending. That's kind of similar to what Outcast did, but again, the MC, like, that'd be, they just wait a year and then they leave together, right? I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up being the case. And then the bad ending could be, let's say, Monica's not able to handle it, you know, taking on. And then either cracks, like, breaks down, like, completely to where, like, she's not able to, like, keep up with what she's been doing. And then, like, starts falling back, you know, falling behind, like, losing her stats, losing her composure, right? Or, like, she ends up pulling a Sayori, right? And committing suicide right I, I i could see there being like three distinct endings like based on you know whatever path right there right again one being the mc is able to get through to her parents and then they you know live in a happily relationship where she is a better work-life balance to where then the second one to where he's not and then basically what happens is they keep it on on the down low right under wraps and she just waits till college and then just says, fuck you, I'm not taking over the family business, right? And then goes off to, like, university somewhere and then they're together. Or third, she just isn't able to keep up, you know, and then just, you know, lose her composure, like, breaks, cracks, lose her stats, right? And then, you know, doesn't end up performing or pulling through, right? And then her parents may, like, you know, punish her, I guess, quote-unquote, accordingly, right? If they're that, you know, cruel, like, I guess, depending on uh, on a scale from just overly strict parents to like straight up abusive and manipulative like Natsuki's dad depending on where they fall in line there the big thing being again and what's vital to this I believe is Monica's parents right and then the MC being able to you know like again like see them and then like interact with them right that that's the big thing here and I think that it would make complete sense for them to play such a big role especially since you know they're seemingly part of the issue right and if they're going to focus on not just his relationship with Maka, right, but also deep-seated issues. It just makes sense for them to be kind of the focal point. And I th think, I, I find out if I developed a fairly clear, you know, timeline in terms of how things would go about, but I think that would be, like, absolutely perfect. So that's what that would look like, you know, for an actual, you know, Maka route, right? And then the second part is that's because obviously there's it's not just Monica on her route, right? Like I mentioned, there's also Sayori and kind of how she'll be dealt with and handled. And then also the MC's father, I think, is a big thing, right? Which would also make sense with him, you know, interacting with and be with Monica's parents, him also reconnecting kind of with his own father, right? Who, again, seemingly hasn't been as involved, but again, they very heavily hinted that that would be kind of the focus as opposed to his mother. So anyway, but first Sayori... The big thing, and I guess the big question is, will the MC learn about his depression? Because theoretically, he could just go through Monica's whole route, just never learning about Sayori's depression and it, never becoming an issue or being raised. Again, I don't know if that's what happens during Yuri Natsuki's route. We'll have to see when I eventually play him. But the big thing there being like that, kind of, I guess, who knows there? And it's like, again, so theoretically, that could be one approach, right? I, I think that's kind of lazy and like a cop-out um my issue being again with how close granted i think it makes sense for the mc not to learn about yuri and natsuki's issues on sayori's route but again with how close the mc is to her and with the role she occupies and you know how, like special she is then being together and stuff like that right you know childhood friends i'd think he'd still end up learning about her issues and then need to deal with them right regardless of you know whose route he's on right that's at least my thinking or philosophy or take on it right so we're going to assume even on Monica's route, such a fictional route, the MC again, or he would still end up learning Sayori's depression and dealing with it and treating it, right? So the question is, because we've already been through Sayori's route, so we know how he deals with it then. How would he deal with it on Monica's route, you know, balancing between Monica and Sayori and then stuff like that there, right? I think a big thing for that would be, again, 
the, also the question is besides you know if he does end up learning when right because we know he doesn't even learn on Sayori's route until after you know not just the festival but like Halloween too he learns on, about it you know after they're already in like a relationship so it's like I, I think what would make sense for him is he like slowly over the course of the route develops his own sneaking suspicions about Sayori kind of more like Yuri did in Sayori's route because again, we knew Yuri always had sneaking suspicions. Maybe Yuri even lets the MC in on it, right? That would be pretty interesting, is if he actually gets a tip off from Yuri at some point, right? And that he, you know, looks more into Sayori there and then realizes it more and more, right? As, you know, inadvertently as he's helping out Maka more, he also realizes Sayori's developing those issues more. And that also seemed to be his kind of, you know, what would you call it? A dilemma in the Sunday scene where he spent that time with Monica, right? But he really felt as though he should have spent that time with someone else, potentially alluding to Sayori, and then him being suspicious or having, you know, kind of being worried about Sayori in that, presumably when she had left Friday, if we're assuming it's like the original Act 1. So I think what would make perfect sense is Yuri to tip him off at some point, right, as he's getting close to Monica, and then he, like, develops his own scene suspicions about Sayori, and then, again, he gets kind of torn there, you know, but is able to balance it kind of similar to how he balanced Sayori and Yuri during Sayori's route. And then he eventually ends up, you know, maybe this is like after, you know, he ends up getting with Monica, right? Or even potentially before. Before would be really interesting because then, you know, there's the whole issue of, you know, jealousy and whether she likes him back, right? So, like, I'd say it would be very interesting if he learned about it, ended up, I, I think, he would figure it out on so and that's the big thing that i'm kind of implying right i don't think amanaka dratsuri would necessarily tell him or at least i don't think it would make as much sense uh, and especially given that you know she doesn't tell him on her own route until like later on i think it would make more sense if yuri tipped him off and he kind of developed his own sneaking suspicions about it learn about it, or at least confronted sayori and then she told him the truth there right and especially if it's before you know again he like ends up getting with monica it's like because then it raised that whole aspect about you know okay does he need to choose between the two right i think it would just raise that up there and then i think again what would kind of make sense is that i think the mc actually like doing very similar things to what we saw in Sayori's route so him like i guess what would you call it? comforting or consoling there being a shoulder for her to lean on and then even the big thing being actually going to therapy with her, but pretty much doing everything besides being an established relationship, because then obviously it's Monica's route, right? I think him doing pretty much, and the big thing being he actually goes to therapy with her, right? But more so as a shore to lean on as for a friend, and as also, you know, the only one who she kind of knows there, right? You know, who ends up knowing about her besides Yuri, who kind of tipped him off, but obviously he got that confirmation himself versus like again he's not obviously not gonna invite monica right like just again being there for say or even if they're not necessarily in a relationship i feel like would be a good way to go about it and then what that would also do is introduce tension i guess between him and monica right since he might need to bail out on some things in order to go to therapy with sayori right and then she ends up becoming suspicious of him and sayori right maybe that's you know her motivation for telling him how he feels you know because she sees him getting close to sayori and again you know Funny enough, very similar to the original game, right? You know, what a coincidence, right? But again, obviously without all the sentience. But again, more so views her... I don't want to say he's kind of taken away from him, but him, like, distancing himself. I, I can see that being a thing. And then she tells... They have, you know, this... I don't want to say argument. They have this, you know, conversation. And she tells him how she feels there. And then it ends up being something to where he reciprocates, right? Because she's, I guess, worried he's, like, distancing himself. And then, again, you know he reciprocates there and then kind of just maybe explains the truth about Sayori, you know, doesn't necessarily say she goes to therapy, but that she's kind of dealing with her own shit and he's been helping her out, right? Kind of like how I guess he almost did with Yuri on Sayori's route. This time he's doing it with Sayori on Monica's route. I just feel like, you know, that would work out perfectly. They already got that dichotomy kind of set up in Sayori's route, so just taking that and applying it to a potential Monica route, especially using that as, I guess, kind of a guise or like sort of a segue into a potential you know monica confession there right because i do think it's very important she tells him how she feels right kind of going outside i guess what would be viewed as like the norm from her like strict parents there i i think that's more important than anything else but again that can kind of be the segue where she views him as kind of dissing himself you know with 
Sayori, right? But then again, we know it's because he's like taking her to therapy and doing everything she can that he can to help her out without actually, you know, being in an established relationship. So that's, I feel like how Sayori would be best handled there. And then obviously, you know, when they make it official, right? You know, hopefully by that point, Sayori's going on her own. Or even if not, you know, the MC, Sayori, and then Monica potentially later on, right? I wouldn't say, I don't think Sayori would kind of announce it or like she would reveal her impression like she did to the club. I think if anything, it would just be a trio of the MC, Sayori, and then Monica kind of hashing things out, right? Because again, it's hard to balance, right? So I think there'd be eventually a confrontation or like, I don't want to say confrontation, but a conversation there where again, the MC and Monica establish, you know, we're a thing, right? But then also the MC says like, Sewer is at least able to tell the truth to Monica and the MC says, like, this is why we've been, you know, why we've been, like, I've been, like, bailing on our meetings or whatever. So, like, assuring Monica there, but then also assuring Sayori that where, you know, even though him and Monica are, like, a thing, right, he's still going to continue to be able to go and help her out, right, be that sure to lean on and caring friend there, potentially even invite Monica along again. Grant, the worry is jealousy, but also the potential issue there is, like, we know... Yuri was kind of jealous of Sayori, but again, that's just something to where, you know, they hash things out in Sayori's route. It would be very similar there, because if you just view them as not understanding, then the issue being, okay, you're just picking one over the R, and the R can go fuck themselves, right? There needs to be an inherent, you know, understanding, or, like, be willingness to, like, compromise there. So I just think if, again, you know, so long as the MC is still helping her actually go into her therapy, that she'd be willing to kind of understand that, right? Or be willing to at least try to, so... I think that would make sense to how do Sayori, and you can also fit that into, again, him working with Monica, because that'd be a pivoting sort of key plot point, like, who does he spend, like, more time with and help, right, because they both have their own deep-seated issues, so I think that just makes sense. Grand, you could always go with the portrayal, okay, she never tells him, but it's like, I mean, I, I think it makes sense for Yuri Natsuki not to reveal this, but I think Sayori kind of needs to regardless, given her role, right, and kind of what she means to the MC, so there's that. And that leads to the third and final tent, again, kind of how the MC's father would work, right? And how he'd play a role into the route. And again, my whole basis for going on his father instead of mother thing is his one, you know, his, like, comments during, like, the second exclusive where he's like, okay, you know, he was always, this reminds me of, you know, my father when I was taking piano lessons back in the day. Uh, like, the disappointment in him and then remembering, like, the grand piano in his house showing he actually visited you know, and, like, actually saw him as opposed to, you know, after the divorce too, right, since she spe he specifically mentions his house, as opposed to, you know, Sayori's route where we just kind of have no clue. And then also just, again, thematic difference between Sayori and Monica as a character, you know, with Sayori being, again, you know, the MC's mother, right, again, that side of the coin, while Monica and the MC's father on that side. Again, childhood more like, you know, there versus, again, more like new... I, or I guess more like contemporary uh, modern day, you know, relationships there. And again, it would also work well within the route itself because then while you got the MC meeting, getting to know and trying to get through to Monica's parents, which I think would be a key and pivotal plot point, you've also got him, again, you know, actually reconnecting with his own father, which granted, again, you know, because the Monica route, clearly it's in some state of completion, just again you know up till a certain point right we know the two exclusives in sunday scene are pretty complete they make references to pre like act one festival events but after that who knows i'm just filling in the gap so again his father i guess a big thing there would be eventually I, I think it would end with their reconnection i don't think it would happen early on the route i think as opposed to like let's say because even the mc with his mother she was only able to come back at a certain time right you know and given that she was the primary focus in Sayori's route, I don't think it, I don't think we'd expect, you know, kind of her and the father to, like, make up. I don't, I don't think that makes sense. And then, because then it's like, okay, why they divorced to begin with, right? So I think this being solely focused on his father and his father's relationship with him makes more sense as opposed to roping the mother involved. So, but again, more akin to Sayori's route, again, since she doesn't even come back until later on, I think the culminating event with the MC's route should be him reconnecting his father. So I think it should be baby steps. I think it should be maybe he opens up to Monica about his relationship with his father, you know, especially given he kind of dropped, you know, a couple of lines of dialogue in, you know, or at least monologue in the second uh, exclusive. I think him opening up to her 
about, you know, his issues with fathers. Maybe after, you know, he, they have, like, you know, a tense, like, you know, conversation, right? Like, he's able to console her, but maybe, you know, she's also able to help console him, right, about his own issues regarding that. I think him opening up and then her kind of, you know, because if she, like, let's say opens up about her family, right, you know, that, like, tips the MC on, you know, to, okay, her family is kind of the issue and her parents' expectations for her. Maybe he opens up about his own father, right, and kind of where he is in his life, you know, especially, like, with his mother. Funny enough, I could see it being something where he still does calls with his mother while trying to arrange, you know, something with his father, right? Or at least I, I think that could be, like, a start of it. Like, yeah, and he opens up about his father and mom, can, you know, says, like, look, you know, you need to, like, like, I, I understand, you know, the divorce, like, took a toll, but it's, like, you need a father in your life. You need both a mother and a father, right? You know, like, he probably needs you as much more as you need him, and it's something to where it's, like, I could see it being something to where what it then leads to is the MC kind of, like, again, if we're assuming some reasonable time of separation, kind of similar to him being separated with Sayori, but instead, this is his father, like, he needs, may need to, you know, go through some resource, obviously not his mother, right, you know, I, I think he'd still be doing separate calls with her, she wouldn't come back, right, but instead, it'd be more him working more so towards his father, so let's see, he gets info from, like, you know, a mutual, like, family friend or something, uh, or, like, you know, just someone who he knows is connected to his father, some way he goes to them, is able to get information from them, right, I won't be surprised, uh, maybe even you can introduce the yours parents that way, but if there's, like, a connecting, and then eventually he gets the info from them, you know, let's say he's able to, uh, you know, actually get in touch with his father, not in person, but, like, digitally, and, you know, he's able to, like, you know, he originally sends him, and then, like, he rejects her, him or something, right, you know, but then let's say he's able to speak to that connecting, you know, person, they're able to have a talk with, you know, his father, right, and then make him change his mind, and then let's say Monica's able to get involved, right, you know, maybe her, I don't, well, I don't want to say her parents, but maybe she's able to get involved, right, you know, and kind of reach out to his father as well, right, and then a combination of that, you know, leading to him maybe, you know, I guess changing his mind, right, you know, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they were to, like, arrange some sort of meeting, and then he ends up bailing, right, and then I think that would be a perfect, like, mid to, like, later route, you know, set up, right, to where, like, this is kind of going on throughout, and then I think, you know, a final, you know, appropriate, uh, like, I, I do think this would actually make for a good ending of the route, you know, like, I, I think a final appropriate, you know, cutscene or interaction there, rather than it being, you know, him and Sayori on Sayori's route, like, let's assume he and Monica already had their moment on her route, right, I, I think afterwards, like, his father maybe like literally just showing up at his house, you know, um, after seemingly having bailed and then not going to see him forever, like him having that change of heart and then showing up and then they don't even need to have an interaction. Just the fact that he shows up and shows that he's willing to reconnect, you know, make amends with his family, right? Like, I, I think that would be a perfect, you know, an almost poetic like ending to that there after the MC had already dealt with Monica's parents and they've basically spent the whole, you know, modern route trying to get set this up, right? Maybe even bring his mother on, right? Or, like, involved. Maybe even make her involved there, right? Granted, I, I like, at that point, you might be overcomplicating it. And then, again, the issue being, like, the MC's father just straight up not involved in the series route. So if we're going, like, the inverse, right, it'd probably be better to keep his mother out of it for Monica's route, right? And maybe he still has calls with her, but maybe if she's just not involved what would be a funny ending scene is if they both showed up at the same time, right? You know, the MC's mother surprised him, same thing with the father, and then it's like, ah, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> that would honestly be pretty hilarious, but I think just more so the focus in Monica's route being on his father, him coming home there, right? And then that being kind of that ending card, you know, ending scene, I, I think that's perfect. And then I think that would be, like, that would be absolutely, like, perfect. Especially if they'd really spent the whole route and gone through all the trouble, like I had mentioned, you know, uh, again, you know, and actually want to get that mean set. I just think that would be absolute perfection. And with that, I mean, that pretty much covers the three tenets and what I think would work well or go into a Monica route. You know, granted, I basically outlined, you know, a rough, I guess, timeline for each or, you know, series of events that would happen for each of those tenets. You know, both Monica, you know, her relationship and dealing with her issues, you know, deep-seated issues through her parents, Sayori through, again, kind of 
actually learning about depression himself and then helping her work through it while doing everything he can besides being in committed relationship and then tying that in, you know, with Monica, right? And maybe that lean to her, you know, again, to some tension, that lean to maybe her, you know, what would you call it? Uh, revealing like her feelings for him is like sort of, I guess what she would view as like a last bit attempt, right? You know, uh, as she may view him as dissing himself from her. And then again, the whole third thing with his father, right? And kind of after learning about Monica's issues with her parents, her opening up to him, maybe he opens up, you know, she convinces him again, you know, to actually try to reconnect. They go through, again, you know, he tries to figure it out, go through the connecting person, right? And then them working it, you know, maybe Monica getting involved, and then it all kind of lean up to just him finally being able to reconnect with his son and then his old family. And I just think if you're able to balance all three of those, I think you'll get an absolute solid, splendid Monica route, right? I know Longer Roads did a Monica route really well. Again, granted, it was different. The focus with Monica was more so, rather than the real, like, practical issues of being over the line and having such a workload, being a workaholic, more so the whole appearance and image and presentation side of things where the MC caused her to kind of realize that stuff really doesn't matter, and especially since he sees her past that. Um, and then again, you know, just more stuff along those lines, right, you know? and being together for that, right? And then obviously they have the two endings there, right? And then, like I said, I guess this is where I'm going to leave this video off. I can see there being one of three endings for, like, Monica, right? In similar to Sayori's route, all those endings were about Sayori. None really dealt with his mother, right? Or even Yuri. Um, in this case, I'm going to assume it to be the same. It's going to deal with mostly Monica, her relationship with the MC, deep seated issues, and more so her parents, right? Since that's going to be the primary factor. I can see there being three endings, good ending being he's able to get through to her parents cause them to realize you know the damage that they're kind of you know i guess parenting is doing on monica and then they change their ways he gets in their relationship you know she develops a more healthy work life balance everything is perfect neutral route he's not able to get through to them and instead him and monica keep it more under wraps and then what happens is when they graduate high school they go to university and monica just says you know fuck you i'm not taking over your family business right you should have realized what you had while you had it right so i can see that being more of a neutral route ending than bad route ending she's just not able to keep up keep up she's not able to maintain sustain her current you know what she's doing and then it ends up to either just her like you know completely collapsing breaking down right not being able to continue on or she ends up taking the sayori option right granted i i, I think that'd be kind of a cop out i don't think any other route should really do that i think just her kind of not being able to keep up and kind of you know I guess, you know, again, you know, not being able to keep up there and eventually, you know, like flunking classes, you know, losing her captain's positions and then like losing her overall, you know, status there. And then I guess disappointing her parents and then then maybe shifting towards like more of a Natsuki's dad approach, right? On the scale of, you know, overtly strict parents to like abusive, manipulative, maybe they end up shifting towards one end if Monica isn't able to keep that up. But I think that's perfect. I don't think you need anything more. I think that does everything you need to, and again, this has already been 30-minute video, so with that, I think I'm just going to end it here again. It's been really nice, because again, I'm just thinking about it already, you know, again, it's just really sad that we never got Monica out, and I'm genuinely curious how close, I guess, my sort of interpretation and thoughts are to the actual thing, so it'll be interesting to see there, but I guess, you know, who knows, right? Well, I guess we won't ever see it, right? But it is what is, you know, not going to change that, right? But with that... I don't really have anything else, so yep, that's it for this one. See you in the next one.